What are the initial emotions like after that game? It sucks. <laughs> it's the worst press conference of the year every year. Unless you're the last man standing. So, yeah, it sucks. I mean, you put so much into a season as a group and you come up short. It's never a good feeling. Just watching your guys in that second overtime, how physically tiring was this game for both teams? Oh, it was tiring. There's no question. I mean, you could see the, you know, our energy level drop as the periods went on. But I'll give like our guys played hard. They played hard every shift. They defended hard. We had some stretches where we spent a bunch of time in our own zone. We. You know, we're sacrificing, doing whatever we could to keep the puck out of the net. Lots of blocks, limited scoring chances or high danger chances for the most part. And they played hard both sides of it. I think, you know, it's just you're playing a good team, a deep team, and it's going back and forth. And, yeah, just unable to get it done tonight. I know every, every season ends too quickly, especially in the playoffs, but just from where you were Monday morning with Jonathan Drouin coming back and being fully healthy, to now, just what has this week been like emotionally? Yeah, I mean, it's it's always emotional this time of the year in the playoffs because the stakes are so high. I think um, our guys handled it pretty well. They, I mean, you're, you're kind of riding that emotional roller coaster after games and then trying to get even keel before the next one and get focused in on what you need to do to win. Guys did that. They played hard. Um, it's always taxing in playoffs because, especially when you're playing teams like this, it's it's tough to win, and you know you got to be at your best every night to do it. And but I think end of the day, all you can ask is for the guys to give you everything they got, and I think they did that. Jared, Jared you obviously know uh, what it takes to win a cup from two years ago. Um, you just lost to a team that uh, that beat you guys after being Vegas last year's champs. I mean, your your, your sense of the stars and 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 if they have what it takes, do you think? Yeah, no question they do. It's I mean, it's a tough road every round, but they're a good team. I mean, they're a really good team. They're disciplined, they're deep. They got great goaltending, well coached. Like the they got everything that you can ask for in a team. They're they're a contender in my book. I mean, I think it's you know, with the new playoff format or newer playoff format, that's it's the way it is. You're gonna run into good teams early. It's not one through eight and reseeding again. It's you know, Winnipeg had we had a 50 win season, which I would consider a good season. That's kind of like the goal get 50 plus every year to put yourself in the conversation for the division, the conference, the league. And you, we ran into Winnipeg, I think, had 110 points first round. We finished with 107. Then you take on the Stars, you know, that's fourth best team in the league and second best team in the league right away. That's what you got to do to get out of a good division. So um, they're taking on Vegas, obviously a very good team, the defending champions than us. And, you know, the road is hard. You know, you got to, you know, I say it all the time, you have to play your best hockey for two weeks and then you got to reset and be able to do it again. Then you got to be able to do it four times if you want to win. Whichever team is the closest to doing that is going to be the team that wins. Jared, I know this is tough for everybody, but how especially tough is it that with Zach Parise that uh, that this is it for him? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. You, you get, you know, because, you know, I talked about this before, you know, we talk him into coming here. He had some options, and the goal is to succeed, you know, as always. And especially when you know you got a guy or two that might be their last kick at the can and, um you want to help them achieve their goals. That's, I mean, they put so much into when they come here, they fit in right away, do whatever he can do to, to help our team. And he's just such a great pro and great person. Like everyone in our room was rooting for him. And, you know, another reason, you know, everyone has their motivations, but everyone, you know, is playing as hard as they can. And I'm sure that's part of it. Coach, I know you're never looking for ex excuses on anything, you know, with everything that you guys battled through in the last week. I guess, have you learned anything new about you know, the core of this team? And, and I guess, you know, if so, what? Yeah, you know, like, we're not the only ones battling through stuff, you know. Like, every team's, you're not 
going through the playoffs without adversity and having to overcome adversity and being a resilient team. And um, I, I, th- I listen. I thought our guys handled it good. I mean, they played hard. You know, we we won last game. We were right there tonight and weren't able to get it done. But again, you, they played hard. They played well. They they you know were committed on both sides of the puck and. I mean, all you can ask is for them to give the, give you their best, and I, and I think they did that. So sometimes it's not good enough, you know. But um, I, I like the character in our room. I like the leadership in our room. You know, they fought to the end, which I like, and I think that's the things you're looking for. That said, you've talked about the other losses in this series, that it was an, a lack of effort, and you mm-hmm. said the guys gave it all you had tonight. Does that – Soften the blow, help you kind of feel proud about. No, I'm well. I'm proud. I'm proud of our team. There's no question. I think, you know, people will have might have some other judgments, but I mean, you know, I'm proud of our team for the reasons that I just gave you. Jonathan Drewin expressed interest in returning to Colorado after this season. With everything he's done for you this year, I guess recapping what it's been like getting the opportunity to coach him and see this resurgence in him, and do you see the future fit? I, I hope so, yeah. I mean, that'll be up to him, his agent, management. You know, there's there's always change, you know. Even when you win, there's change, as we saw. Um, when you lose, there's change. There's there, It's a, you know, it's part of the business. Um, but he was a great teammate, and I love the improvement in his game, the growth in his game. Um on both sides of the puck, and he's well liked in our locker room. So, certainly like his ability and his talent and the way he played for us this year. So, hopefully, we can get it done. Corey Van Adam. Sorry, I know it's um, I know it's fresh, but uh, just how do you balance like the fact that you have this core of world class players, but you also have, um, for different reasons, Gabe and Val are just kind of big uncertainties going into next season and beyond. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. There's, you hate having that uncertainty because it makes harder to plan for what you know. For for management, right? For Chris and Joe, like, how do you plan? You know, they'll get clear on those guys' situations as best they can, and then form a plan and go from there. I don't know. That, I mean, you're hoping for answers and clarity so then you can build your team around that but it's obviously a couple of guys that have a significant cap hit and so I don't know where all that goes this summer and how quickly they can get it sorted out for July 1 or after that but that's a, that's um that's a challenge that's a big challenge you know with Gabe like how close did he get to playing and I guess on that Having been around him for a few months now, seeing him skate, are you optimistic and hopeful you'll get your captain back next year? I'm I'm optimistic and hopeful. Um, I don't I don't think we got close to getting him back. I think like he just hit that year mark, which would have made it okay if, it, if the progress would have just been perfect. Um, and I trust Gabe, and I know he's doing everything he can with our staff, with other people, to make sure that he's. Um, not only like I think it got to the point where it was like he wasn't going to be able to play this year, so then he can be cautious and he has the summer to get ready, and he's going to take it step by step and be methodical with it. But he's going to put his all into it, and I'm really hoping, like not just for us but for Gabe, that he's able to play again. He wants to play, and um, you know it's been a long road for him. I'd like nothing more than to see him be able to come back and play, and and I, and I think that that can happen if anyone can do it. Gabe can do it. Jared, and talking with some of the guys in the room, it seemed like some of the emotion was tied to the fact that this felt like this was a roster capable of winning a cup, especially after the trade deadline. Is that's the same for you? I mean, every yeah. year you feel like you could win it, but this roster especially felt built to, to make a run. Yeah, I think um, – I don't know about every year, you know, uh, that you feel you can win it, and I don't know it's possible to build a roster that's able to win it every year. Like, you only have – we talked about this at near the deadline that you only have so many assets that you can trade and you know upgrade and math has got to work. There's so many variables in it, um, but I do think that this is a raw like you. 
you're right there, you know, you're right there. I mean, there's eight teams. If you look at the eight teams, I might take on it. There's probably more than that, but the eight teams that were in the second round, I mean, you got Carolina, 110, 111 points. They're out. Boston, 109. We're 107. I mean, you're talking about all 50-plus win teams that are all going out to better teams, right? It's, you know, it's Florida Rangers on that side. They finished 1-4 and four in the league. It's Dallas on this side that was second in the league. And, you know, Van or Edmonton, you know, Van was third in the league. So it's the teams that did it in regular season and were consistent and built that, those rosters are all right there. I mean, it's hard-fought games right away in the first round. Good teams are losing out, and in the second, there's a lot more. Jared, obviously, last game of the season, it took a little bit longer to let media into the room. That that last meeting that you get with a team like this when it ends so suddenly, how tough is it to address it? Not just Parisi, but knowing there are guys here, you know, the reality is not everybody can come back. And does it ever get easier to have that final talk? No. Just like this is the worst press conference of the year, that's the worst meeting of the year. And we'll see our guys. Like, they'll be in for medicals and – um, getting cleared and meet with us and, you know, so we'll get other conversations with them before we all depart to wherever we're going. Um, yeah, but it's never fun. I mean, you just look at the disappointment in their eyes and breaks your heart. Thank you, Jeff. Coach, just kind of uh, last, were there any players that were maybe playing through stuff, uh, you know, significant injuries here in this round? Uh, I don't know. They'll put that release out. Like, Casey got dinged up tonight early in the game and was struggling a little bit to skate. I think it was his hip. So, you know, and he fought through it the whole way. I think he played almost 30 minutes with it, um, but he was struggling a little bit. Um, there's always guys with injuries that you're nursing along the way. I think that's the same for every team that even, like, coming out of regular season and into the playoffs, you're trying to get as healthy as we can. And we and we, we got some good rest coming into this, so we got a little more healthy than we were after the – uh, first round with the break, but um, yeah, I don't know what everyone else will have. They'll see uh, see the docs on probably Monday, I'm guessing, and uh, and then we'll get you an update on that.